Okay, welcome back to the series of lectures on transform calculus and so far we have covered Laplace transform including uh, its applications to uh, solving partial differential equations, ordinary differential equations and in the rest of uh, this lecture we shall discuss about the Fourier transform and before we uh, continue this Fourier transform it is very important to to introduce Fourier series because it gives a pathway to understanding uh, Fourier transform and Fourier series has its own uh, wide range of applications uh, for example, in analysis of uh, current flow and, and sound, sound waves and many more. They are also used uh, to solve uh, differential equations and in a general sense we can say that we use Fourier series to represent a or to approximate a periodic function and indeed not a periodic function, but a function uh, which is defined on a finite interval. So, let us let us see that if a function is uh, defined for example, in a interval 0 to L. So, what we uh, do in that case since this Fourier series represents a periodic function that we extend this as a periodic function on the whole real axis and then we approximate this function which is periodic now by the Fourier series by the Fourier series and then this Fourier series will approximate this function which was defined 0 to L. So, in that way we basically can have this Fourier series for, for any function which is uh, defined on a finite interval 0 to L. So, since we are or we will be talking about the periodic function. So, let us again uh, we just recall this. So, if a function f is periodic with period t, then we have f t is equal to f t plus this period. So, the function value is again the same after this uh, uh, period capital T and the smallest of t for which the equality holds or which uh, for which the equality f t is f t plus t is true is usually called period of f t. So, most familiar periodic functions are most familiar periodic functions are like we know already it is a sin x, cos x, tan x and so on. So, the one point here or the property of this periodic uh, functions that the sum difference or product or the quotient of two periodic function is again a periodic function. So, consider for example, a function f x as sin x plus sin 2 x plus cos 3 x. So, what is the period of this sin x is 2 pi the period of the sin 2 x is 2 pi divided by 2 and the period of this cos 3 x is 2 pi and divided by this frequency 3. So, we have 2 pi by 3 that is the period of this function. So, what we see that the common period of all these three function is this 2 pi it has two circle in this 2 pi range, it has three circles uh, or cycles in this uh, 2 pi range. So, the common period is basically 2 pi of this function and 
basically what we have that f x plus 2 pi will be. So, because f x plus 2 pi is again sin x and sin 2 x plus 2 pi will be again sin 2 x because this 2 pi is also period for this sin 2 x function and same for this cos 3 x we have again this uh, the value will repeat after this 2 pi. So, we have this common period for all these three function is 2 pi and that is the period of this f x function. So, f x is periodic and it has the period 2 pi. So, let me just uh, introduce a interesting property of periodic function which we shall be using in this lecture periodic functions a property of periodic function. So, if we have a periodic, uh, a periodic function of period uh, capital T then and the function is integrable. So, a to t plus a. So, we are integrating over this length t this function f t which is uh, a periodic function of period this capital T. So, this will be equal to we take any other b here and b to b plus t f x d x for any a and b. So, if a function is integrable on any interval of length t then this is integrable on any other interval of the same length and the value of the integral is the same. And this we can without going to formal proof what we can see what we can see here that for example, we consider that this is the the periodic function we are talking about and so on. So, this is uh, from 0 to capital T we have this uh, period and so on. So, if we integrate for example, from here in a uh, interval of this t. So, this will end up here this is again t. Now, if you see that this area which we get after this integral is basically equal to, to this area if we integrate over 0 to t. So, basically what we have that 0 to t f x d x 0 to t f x d x this is equal to any a we can take up to a plus t as we have taken here and this will be equal because the part we left here of this uh, smaller circle that is included here. So, we are getting actually this area. So, this result is is true. Now, we talk about the trigonometric polynomial and trigonometric series. trigonometric polynomials and series. So, trigonometric polynomial of order n is defined I will call it s n x some constant plus k from 1 to n another constant a k and cos k pi x over L plus p k and sin k pi x over L. So, what is the common period of, of uh, these functions here? So, the common period Uh, the largest period what we will get while putting k is equal to 1. So, this is we will get here cos 
phi x over l and this sin phi x over l and here the period is uh, 2 pi over this number pi and l. So, we have 2 l. So, what this represents this sum this represents a function of period 2 l. However, if we keep on increasing this n this will is still represent a function of period 2 l. In fact, the result is true for the infinite series as well if it converges of course. So, the infinite series if we talk about a plus this k from 1 to infinity a k cos pi k x over l plus b k and sin pi k x over l if it converges. So, if it converges also represents a function of period 2 l. Now, the question is can any function can any given function of period uh, 2 l be represented as a sum of trigonometric series and the answer to this question is yes, because it is possible for a wide variety of uh, or wide class of functions. So, we will be talking about today that how to get such a infinite series for a given function. So, before we go into that detail we just consider the orthogonality property or conditions for the sine and cosine functions. So, we call two functions phi x and psi x orthogonal on the interval a to b if a to b phi x psi x if this integral is 0. And with this definition what we can say that the basic trigonometric system trigonometric system of period 2 pi. So, 1 cos x sin x cos 2 x sin 2 x and so on cos n x sin n x is orthogonal. on the interval minus pi to pi. So, we shall prove that any two distinct functions if we take then they are orthogonal. So, let us go through the proof quickly. So, for any integer if we take which is not is equal to 0 what we have that minus pi to pi if with this function 1 we take any other function cos n x d x what will be the integral this is sin n x and over n and we have minus pi 2 pi and sin n pi 0 sin minus n pi is 0. So, we get here equal to 0. Similarly, if we take here the multiplication with 1 and the sin n x for any n not equal to 0 because for 0 it is going to be 0. So, what we have here minus cos n x over minus over n and minus pi to pi and this cos n 
pi will be minus uh, 1 power n and again this cos minus uh, pi will be uh, the same minus 1 power n. So, here this will also give us 0. Let us see what will happen if we take the, the same functions from that system that means minus pi to pi and if we take cos square n x. So, cos n x and cos n x the product. So, minus pi to pi and we have this 1 plus cos 2 n x over 2 d x and in this case though so this will give 0 because sin 2 n x and pi and minus pi both will be 0, but we have here half and the integral that is 2 pi. So, we get pi and similarly we if we take the sin n x and sin n x. So, sin is square n x d x we will also get this pi because we have 1 minus cos 2 n x over 2 d x and this will also give then pi. Now, we take for any integer m and n where m is not is equal to n what we have if we integrate minus pi to pi and cos n x and cos m x. So, any two function we have taken here. So, what we can write this 2 cos n x cos m x. So, minus pi to pi that will be cos n x plus m x. So, n plus m x n plus cos n x minus n m x. So, n minus m x and then d x. So, again we have sin after this integration here also we have sin. So, in that case this pi and minus pi both will give us 0 again and similarly if we take here sin n x and sin m x the product of these two functions and we can again see that this will be also 0. So, 2 times this will be cos n x minus m x. So, n minus m x and minus cos the sum of these two. So, this is n plus m x d x and for the same reason we have also this is equal to 0. Now, we take the, the, the left combination and that is again for any integer we can take m and n and if we take the product of sin and cosine. So, n x and the cos m x d x. So, in this case we have minus pi to pi sin n plus m x and 2 sin cos. So, we have plus this sin a minus b. So, n minus m x and d x we will get here cos and cos pi or minus pi it is the same value. So, we will get again 0. So, in brief what we got for any integer m and n we have the following result that for minus pi to pi if we integrate this cos n x cos m x d x or it is the property of the periodic function that instead of this minus pi to pi we can go for any a to a plus 2 pi it will be the same. We have cos n x and cos m x d x and this will be 0 if m is not is equal to n and will be pi if m is equal to n because in that case we have the square here and of course, this this should not be equal to, to 0 otherwise we will have 2 pi value here. So, this is one result we have the second one minus pi to pi if we take sin m x uh, or n x m x or a to a plus 2 pi the same value we will get n x and sin m x d x in this case also we have this 0 if m is not is equal to n and we have pi if we have m is equal to n and not is equal to 0. So, the last case we have minus pi to pi where we have combination. So, sin 
n x n cos m x d x this will be a to a plus 2 pi and we have sin n x cos m x d x and this is always 0 whatever is m is equal to n or not equal to n we will get 0. So, this was for the family or for the system where the common period was 2 pi and we are integrating from minus pi to pi. A similar result we have basically more general for the system if we take 1 cos pi x over l sin pi x over l cos 2 pi x over l and sin 2 pi x over l and so on. So, here the common period common period is, is 2 l and now we have again a similar result that if we integrate from minus l to l or from 0 uh, a to uh, 2 uh, l or 0 to 2 l. So, we have cos m pi x over l and cos n pi x over l d x or we take this from a to a plus 2 l uh, 2 l the same integrand and this will be equal to 0 if m is not is equal to n and will give us l if m is equal to n and not is equal to 0. The analogously we have this second result minus l to l and we have sin m pi x over l and sin n pi x over l d x or a to a plus 2 l we can integrate. So, if m is not is equal to n otherwise it is l if this m is equal to n and not equal to 0. And the last one if we have the product of the two so that sign m pi x over l and cos n pi x over l d x and this will be 0. So, now we have done this preparation to go for the Fourier series. So, Fourier series now we will introduce and here so we let us start with so let f x be defined in the interval minus pi to pi and s 2 pi periodic. 2 pi periodic. So, let me just mention this that the for simplicity we are taking the symmetric interval, but uh, definitely this is not uh, necessary at all uh, that all the, uh, these functions uh, to be defined on a symmetric interval. So, this is just for the simplicity and later we will see uh, while discussing the examples that we will go for basically for any interval, but the function should be periodic or later on for the Fourier series also we will uh, generalize this when the period is not 2 pi, but for any given general period what will be the Fourier series. So, now suppose the function f x has the expansion f x a naught by 2 k 1 to infinity a k cos k x p k sin k x. So, we have taken this instead of this constant uh, a naught by 2 to have this consistency with this e a k later on we will see why this factor 2 we have introduced here 
so now the 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 question is or the problem is that how to determine these coefficients for a given function f x. Yeah, so for this we have taken one assumption that the series here can be integrated can be integrated term by term. That is we have assumed that for the series the integral of the sum is equal to the sum of the integral. So, now we integrate the series here from minus pi to pi for a general case when we will be taking minus L to L uh, for the function of period 2 L we will integrate again from minus L to L, but in this case we integrate this minus pi to pi and let us assume that the integral of this is equal to the integral of this f x. So, integrating the series 1 from minus pi to pi what we obtain minus pi to pi f x d x. So, this is a by 2 and the integral minus pi to pi and we have 1 d x and plus k 1 to infinity we have here a k and then minus pi to pi cos k x d x plus this b k and we have this integral minus pi to pi sin k x d x. So, both these integrals this one is 0 and the other one both are 0 we have just seen. So, what we get from here that a naught because this will be 2 pi this is 2 pi. So, we have a naught pi. So, a naught is 1 over pi and minus pi 2 pi f x d x. So, we have obtained this a naught the one coefficient of that series and now we multiply to get the other uh, constants. So, we multiply 1 that series 1 both the side. So, to f x and the, the series. So, both uh, the side by cos n x and integrate. So, from minus pi to pi of course. So, what will happen in this case we have minus pi to pi and f x cos n x d x is a naught by 2 we have minus pi to pi and cos n x d x plus k 1 to infinity a k minus pi to pi cos k x cos n x d x and plus b k minus pi to pi sin k x. So, sin k x and cos n x d x. Okay, so, this is the sin and cos. So, this will be always 0 that is what we have seen and here we have cos k x cos n x. So, when this k will be n this value would be pi for k is equal to n and the rest all the values are 0 and this is again this is 0. So, what we got that minus pi to pi and f x cos n x d x is equal to we have this a n and pi. So, we get basically a n is equal to 1 over pi minus pi to pi and f x cos n x d x. So, this is the 
formula for the a n and here n is a 0 we already got, but if you see that a 0 now we have this we can also get from here because a 0 is going to be um, 1 over pi minus pi to pi f x d x. So, this is basically true for n 0, 1, 2 and so on and similarly we can get this b n. So, we multiply instead of this cos n x by sin n x and in that case this term will vanish and here we will get pi because sin k x sin n x. So, in this case b n we will get 1 over pi minus pi to pi f x and sin n x d x. So, here the n are 1, 2 and so on. So, these coefficients the a n and b n they are called so, this a n and b n they are called Fourier coefficients Fourier coefficients and the trigonometric series this a naught by 2 and this k 1 2 infinity a k cos k x plus b k sin k x is called the Fourier series. and we normally denote by this tilde. So, f x this is the Fourier series for for f x and we uh, we are not writing here the equality because first of all this is clear from, from the construction we have evaluated these coefficients a k and b k by putting the integral equals and that does not mean that the f x is equal to the sum of the series. So, that part we will be uh, discussing more in detail that when we can have the equality that means the series converges to the function value f x. Okay, so, just a, a remark here. So, if we just take a look at the coefficients this Fourier coefficients a n b n this is minus pi to pi f x cos n x d x and if we change the value of the function at finite number of points for this f x at finite number of points then these integrals defining these coefficients are unchanged. So, the functions which differ at finitely many points have exactly the same Fourier series. Okay, so, this was the Fourier series for the uh, function of period 2 pi and we have defined or we have assumed for simplicity that our function is defined from minus pi to pi. And now, we go for a general case we will skip definitely the proof because all the steps are very similar what we have done, but now we will consider when a function uh, is of a general period and we uh, let us say 2 l again for simplicity and define in the interval minus l 2 l. So, let f x be defined in the interval minus l to l and f x is 2 l periodic is 2 l periodic. Then the Fourier series of this function will be given by a naught by 2 k 1 to infinity and we have to take now the family of the, the trigonometric function which has the common period 2 l. So, that will be cos k pi x over l plus b k and sin k pi x over l and where these Fourier coefficients will be given by 1 over L. So, instead of 1 over pi we have 1 over L and minus L to L f x and these functions k pi x over L d x or we can also integrate from a to uh, a plus 2 L that integral value will be same. 
So, for the B k we have 1 over L minus L 2 L or from 0 to 2 L or A 2 A plus 2 L that is f x sin k pi x over L d x. So, this is the general Fourier series where a function is of period 2 L. Now, we have the following questions to be answered. So, does the Fourier series converge at a point x minus pi to pi or if the series converges at x is the sum function equal to f x. So, the answer to these questions are in negative and there are functions defined on minus pi to pi whose Fourier series uh, diverges everywhere and there are functions uh, in fact continuous functions whose Fourier series uh, diverges at uh, a countable number of points, but we are not going into the detail of all these convergence and and the conditions for the different kind of convergence, but because this is a rather introductory lecture and we should uh, go to this Fourier transform later on. So, what we do, but uh, let, let me just mention that we definitely I mean uh, have some additional conditions on this f to ensure that the series converges and that we will uh, see in a minute. But before let me just mention that there are several notion of convergence and the one is the point wise convergence which we will be talking about point wise convergence. So, in a rather uh, informal manner if I uh, define here. So, consider an infinite infinite series an infinite series f 1 x plus f 2 x plus f 3 x and so on or we can write in summation form k 1 to infinity and f k x and such a series is said to be convergent for a given value of x if its partial sum s n x which is uh, n or k is equal to 1 to n and f k x has a sequence of partial sums have a finite limit that is the limit n tending to infinity s n x exist and let us call it that this is equal to s x. So, if this is the case that for the given value of x this a sequence of this partial sums s n x converges to some s x then we call that we have here the point wise convergence because it is depending on a particular value of x. We have a, a stronger version of convergence and that is called that is called a uh, uniform convergence uniform convergence and in the uniform convergence a sequence this f n of functions converges uniformly. So, this is the stronger uh, notion of convergence than the point wise convergence uniformly to a uh, to a function a limiting function f 
if the speed of convergence of this f n x to f does not depend on x. So, what does that mean the speed of convergence that a little bit with the help of examples we will see. So, if we just take an example f n x is equal to x power n it is a very standard example and x is between 0 and 1. So, this function will converse point wise to a function f x which is 0 and 1 0 when x is 0 and 1 in the open interval and when x is equal to 1. So, let us see what is happening here. So, if we take any x between 0 and 1 this x power n as n approaches to infinity will always go to 0 and if we take x is equal to 1. So, then in fact, it is 1. So, uh, we have uh, this 1 it is a constant uh, uh, sequence in that case. So, now we, we were talking about the speed of convergence that for the uniform convergence the speed of convergence of this f n x does not depend on x. So, what is happening here that if x is close to 1 for example, if x is close to 1 then this convergence is very slow because we have uh, very close to 1 power n and the this uh, sequence will go slowly to the 0 and if we have x close to 1 this will go or this will converge very fast to the 0. So, what we see here that this convergence the speed of convergence varies with this x, but for example, if we take a function uh, sequence of function 1 over n and sin n x and for basically any x we can talk about and this will always go to the function f x is equal to 0 and here we have uniform convergence and of course, the point wise convergence because this is a stronger version of, of the convergence. Uh, so, in this case whatever x we take 1 over n will go to 0 and it, it basically does not depend on x, but here it was different if x close to x is close to 1 then we have a very slow convergence to 0, but in this case we have 1 over n here and whatever x we take. I mean we can avoid the case of 0 then it is a constant sequence. So, that is of course, 0, but in general I mean this is not depending on on x. Yeah. So, we are not going into very much uh, into the detail of, of these uh, two notions of convergence, but I hope that uh, I have given at least some idea of the uniform convergence and also uh, for the point wise convergence. So, now we can talk about the convergence theorem, convergence theorem or this is also called Dirichlet's theorem and these are the sufficient conditions for the convergence. So, what we have suppose that the f x is defined except possibly at a finite number of points in elastic general interval. So, minus L 2 L or we can take an open interval minus L 2 L and the f x is periodic with a period 2 L and f x is piecewise continuous. So, we have already defined this piecewise continuity. So, the function is continuous other than some uh, at finitely many points and at those points the right and the left limit exist. 
and the one more condition here we need that one sided derivative one sided derivatives of f exist and is finite yeah so and is finite at each point in this minus l to l so what does that mean one sided derivative? So, we have the, the limit h to 0 from uh, the, the positive side. So, f x plus h this is right derivative minus f x the right limit of, of this uh, function at x the function may not be defined at x. So, we have divide by h if this exists and is finite of course, at each x minus l to l, l here the closed interval and the left limit h to 0 minus or 0 plus sorry. So, f x the left limit minus f x minus h <coughs> over h this exists at each at each x uh, minus l to l. Uh, here we have so here we are talking about the right limit. So when uh, we are uh, here that f x plus so basically is this here it should be the open interval the right side because here we take uh, we exclude the case because at this point l we do not require this uh, uh, right derivative to exist and here at this uh, left point minus l also we do not require that left derivative to exist. So, at all other points the both the right and the left limit should exist at the extreme left end only the right limit the right derivative and at extreme left only the left limit or left derivative should exist. So, what we have these conditions that if f x is defined except possibly at a finite uh, number of points and the conditions that if f x is periodic piecewise continuous and these one sided derivatives of f exist at each point in minus l to l. If these, these conditions are satisfied and these are the sufficient conditions for the convergence then for each x minus l to l the Fourier series a naught by 2 plus n 1 to infinity a n cos n pi x over l and this b n sin n pi x over l converges to f x plus minus f x minus divide by 2. So, to the average value and note that. So, in that case this is equal to this basically and at the point of continuity because this right limit and the left limit they are equal to f x oh sorry plus this is the average value. So, in the, at the point of continuity this f x plus is equal to f x and this f x minus is also equal to f x. So, in that case we have this equal to f x at the point of continuity. Otherwise, we need to take the average value to make this equal. And the last remark what we have that in, adi in addition to all these assumptions what we have if our function is, is continuous then we have even a stronger version of this convergence and that is the uniform convergence. So, but we are not going into the detail of all these convergence. So, let us just quickly go through the one example. 
So find the Fourier series of the function minus pi x and we have minus pi when x is minus pi to 0 and x is 0 to 2 pi and the function is periodic. So, f x plus 2 pi is equal to f x and further. So, here find the Fourier series Fourier series to represent to represent the function which is defined by this and the further find the sum of the series for x is equal to 0 and x is equal to plus minus pi. So, this function if we just take a look it is it is x when 0 to pi on its minus pi and 0 to minus pi and then it is periodic. Okay. So, then we have again here and it will go like this. So, the function is periodic. So, this and all other conditions are of course, satisfied that the its piecewise continuous and the derivative at all these points left and right derivative exists. So, we do not have to check that. So, this is the Fourier series cos n x plus b n sin n x and we calculate this a 0 first that is 1 over pi and we have minus pi to pi f x d x. So, f x d x. So, we can break this from minus pi to 0 we have minus pi d x plus 0 to pi we have x d x and this is 1 over pi and minus pi square because minus pi and then we have x here. So, we will get again minus pi. So, this is minus pi square and plus we will get pi square by 2. and this is nothing else but pi by minus pi by 2. Now, we calculate the a n for this function a n 1 over pi minus pi to pi and f x cos n x d x we have 1 over pi minus pi to 0 minus pi cos n x d x plus 0 to pi and the function is f x cos n x d x. So, 1 over pi here we take minus pi and this is sin n x over n minus pi to 0 plus 1 over pi this 1 over pi and we have the we have to integrate by parts. So, we have x and sin n x over n 0 to pi minus 0 to pi and sin n x over n d x. So, here when we put 0 sin 0 is 0 and then sin uh, this minus pi is also 0. So, this is 0 and then we have 1 over pi. Here again we have this from 0 and we will get this 1 over n square and cos n x I would minus this minus will be plus and we have 0 to pi. So, we have n square pi and then the cos pi that is minus 1 n and minus 1. So, this is 0 when n is even and minus 2 over n square pi if n is odd. So, similarly we can get this b n which is 1 over pi and minus pi to pi f x sin n x d x this is 1 over n and I skip all these calculations. So, we will get 2 and minus 1 over n. So, in this case we have 
minus 1 over n when n is even and 3 over n if n is odd. So, our Fourier series representation for this function a 0 by 2 a 0 was minus pi by 2. So, we have minus pi by 4 minus and that is a n and b n. So, we will get finally this cos x plus cos 3 x 3 square plus cos 5 x over 5 square and so on plus for the sign we will get 3 over that is b n. So, 3 over was 3 and sign x we will get then the next term will be sin 2 x over 2 down 3 uh, from here 3 sin 3 x over 3 and so on. Now, at x is equal to 0 what will be the sum of the series. So, the sum of the series at x is equal to 0. So, if we just see here at x is equal to 0 we have to take the average of these two values and that is 0 and minus pi and divide by 2. So, we have to take the f x. Uh, so, at 0 0 plus and f uh, 0 minus divide by 2. So, we have 0 minus pi. So, we have minus pi by 2 and same at plus minus pi. So, at that plus minus pi we have again the pi and we have the minus pi. So, at this these two points we have the plus pi and the minus pi by 2. So, will be 0. Okay, so, in this lecture we have seen uh, the, the Fourier series and the conditions for the convergence and that was the piecewise continuity and the differentiability uh, of the function left and right derivative uh, should exist and uh, more we will continue in the, in the next lecture till then bye thank you.